If you're an aged pensioner who eats meals out of cans, have I got some good news for you. The cans can be used later as a variable capacitor, like for a crystal set. Here's an example. This one is mild curry. Anyway, you'll be probably familiar with these if you're in Australia in your supermarket. Comes in a tin, I use the tin opener to cut off both the top and the bottom lids. And then I just soldered a wire as you can see here. That's one plate. Another is this tin of Dolmati's. It's the cheap Woolworths brand. What I did with this was I just used a file, filed away some of the surface, soldered some wire to it. And so that's the other parts of the variable capacitor. If I put this over this, the capacitance is formed by the overlap of the two plates. If you press it tightly, you've got maximum capacitance. If you have it loose or like that, minimum capacitance. Very important that these are not electrically touching and for that I would suggest using some sort of tape or book wrapping on one of these, either this one or this, so that you can put this over this and just make sure there isn't an electrical connection. Otherwise that will short out the variable capacitor and it won't be a capacitor at all. Let's do that, put it on the capacitance meter and see what sort of values we get. Here's some suitable tape. I've got it set up like this, pretty close to minimum capacitance, very little overlap between most of the metal surfaces, and it's around 22 picofarad. Just move it a little bit more like that, a bit closer, 40 picofarad. In like this, around 60 picofarad. Just press it a little bit tighter in. We're up to about 80. Just holding it like this, about 120. I have a rubber band, so it's applying a bit of pressure. And we're up to nearly 230 picofarad. If I press this in a bit more, uh, the highest I can get is just over 250. See, I'll just slide this out like that. So less overlap. Here we're at 197. Now it's not quite even, so we'll slide this out a bit more. A look inside the antenna coupler. BNC socket is connected to the transceiver. One microhenry coil, 2.2 microhenry, 4.7 microhenry. They are in series, but you can tap off to get a choice of inductances for different antennas and different bands. You can see there is a resistor, 150K value is not critical. That is really there for mechanical support more than anything else. That's actually connected straight across the free end of the 4.7 microhenry inductor just down to ground. You can see the alligator clip just in the center of the screen that connects to the outer section of the variable capacitor and you also have the NFED antenna also connected to this point but you just move the clip depending on what inductance you need. 
You've got a choice of three inductances, just one. When you've got the clip on this point, you've got about 3.2 microhenry. That comprises the one plus the 2.2. And there where the clip is, it is 2.2 plus one plus 4.7. So it's close to 8 microhenry. You could use different values if you find the matching isn't quite right. Another thing you could potentially do is just have a short wire with alligator clips to short out certain inductors. Like if you wanted just 4.7 microhenry in circuit, you could just short this point to the center of the BNC with a short jumper cable. Just to clarify things, here's the circuit diagram. Uh, left to right transceiver, 1 microhenry, 2.2 microhenry, 4.7. And then on the right is the variable capacitor. Goes up to you know, a 10 to 200 picofarad or 250 picofarad. That is what we've made with those two tins. So just a straightforward L-match coupler. If you want a bit more versatility, then you should have uh, some finer adjustment to the coils. Maybe try them in a different combination. Will this antenna coupler actually going to work? To find out, I'm here at my local beach. I've got an end-fed wire. It will be hard to see, but it's about 20 meters long. So it's a high impedance on seven megahertz. And I've just set up the coupler here so there's maximum noise I can receive. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for the signal report. Um, uh, operator Eric here. Echo, Romeo, India, Kilo. Uh, Eric is my name. I'm in central Victoria, 35 kilometres southwest of Bendigo. Um, yep, uh, so five and eight, uh, Peter. There's QSB on the, on the signal, but 100% uh, copy nonetheless. Calling CQ, CQ, CQ. VK three Y E portable calling CQ and listening. Just gone down to the lowest inductive setting of the one micro Henry, and after a bit of fiddling. I've got it to reasonably low on 14 megahertz. You are there, BK4, Mike, Golf, Luna, standing by. Thanks, Peter, working to Melbourne at the moment, but uh, I can't hear the overseas guys today. Oh, well, doesn't matter, we'll keep going. Thanks a lot, Peter, 72. Hey, Peter, BK3, Yankee Echo. Contacts in all, mix of CW, SSB and FT8, all on either 40 or 20 meters. I didn't get any DX contacts on FT8, but my signal was picked up several thousand kilometers away. This is 15 meters, 17 meters much more localized. Uh, 20 meters, bit of DX, little bit of reception in Europe, but mainly around Australia. There you have it. You don't need to buy a ready-made variable capacitor in order to make an L-match antenna coupler that at least sort of works, even though it's a bit fiddly to adjust if you want to change bands quickly. 
time for something to eat. I suppose one could make a tuna tuna. Do you want to get the most from your portable QRP operating? Good Antennas is a great place to start. Find out how I succeed with my two books, Hand Carried QRP Antennas and More Hand Carried QRP Antennas. They're big sellers with favourable reviews from all around the world. To learn more, visit vk3ye.com or search the titles on Amazon.